Hello and welcome to my stream. My name is Little and today I'm going to continue to read Homestuck as last time I'm using the unofficial Homestuck collection so that the comic will be in the way that it should be like it was back in 2009 because the official version in the net is not the, it's not the best version anymore. Okay, so you probably noticed I did something else. I don't have the little chat window anymore because I have to put the chat window from Twitch in here anyway so that I can read it because I don't have a multiple monitor set up. I'm not, I'm not that professional. I'm just doing this as a hobby, so I'm just having the Twitch chat on top. For some reason it just put five times welcome in the chat for me, like I don't know why this is a thing. <laughs> but whatever, you can read the chat as well because I put it on my screen. And yeah, and now I think we are starting to read the comic. We are on page 271 and we have an unseen tunnel welcome sort desert air into its stagnant depths. And we have something to watch. This creature. We see John in the apple. Boy, you there, boy. Oh, the rose walks to us getting. <laughs> An examination of the basics. Upon connecting with a client user, you, the server user, will be met with a control panel allowing you to manipulate your co-player's environment. You will find that you are allowed to deploy, to deploy four items at no expense. Three of these are rather large machines and one is a punch card. It's quite possible that you have already deployed some of these items before reading this. If this is the case and you have activated the machine called the Crooks Tudor such that it displays a countdown, hello stack, you must proceed to section A100 of this walkthrough immediately. The life of the client user depends on it, if and if your co-player has activated this device in your environment too, then yours does as well. But if not, please refrain from doing anything with a quick tutor aside from merely deploying it. This requires some time to think things through properly. And you go over the basics of the game before you find your soft, easily punctured head in the jaws of the lion. As mentioned, there are four items to consider, each playing a role in a process which appears to have a singular purpose. To manufacture objects out of thin air. The designer of the game, judging by the language used, regards this process as a sort of alchemy. This may allude to complexities in the production process yet to present themselves, but for now, the variety of objects you are able to create remains quite limited. The items in question are the crooks looter, again treat lightly with this one, the totem lace, the alchemeter and the pre-punched card. I will describe how these devices work in conjunction in condem conjunction with each other and I will use the energy of having a key made at the hardware store to help you understand. First deploy all of these objects in convenient proximity to each other. Be sure not to block doors or pathways with them. You can always revise the dimensions of rooms to make space for them but it arise against this or even experimenting with a function. Doing so comes at the expense of build quest. A commodity which appears to be at a premium at the onset and you best be advised to save for later. So before I continue, uh, the beginning of Homesack has a lot of pages like this to explain what's happening better. <laughs> the Crooks Tudor. Removing the lit signals the moment your life becomes a great whirling budget pandemonium, somewhat resembling the case of an especially ethnic wedding. Somewhere, a soused uncle deliberately shatters shiner on the floor. Muddy livestock is decorated and then lost track of the question. Whose mule is this at times can be heard over the din. This is now your will reality. But aside from that, it marks the beginning of the process I am about to describe. The countdown begins, yes, also an entity, entity called the kernel sprite is released. But neither of these things are all that relevant to this process to my knowledge. More on these things later. What is relevant is the unlimited crooks to his ability to dispend crooksy towels. It will dispense at least once, so I suspect it is capable of producing more, given parameters I am not yet familiar with. In my key making analogy, these towels represent the uncarved pieces of metal which the hardware store employee retrieves from a drawer or a rack and sets about carving into a key. The two following items are needed to do the carving. The pre-punched card. It is a simple Syllabex card containing an item. There is evidence to suggest the specific item it contains is variable from session to session. The card I deployed contained a blue apple. Yours may be different, it shouldn't matter hopefully. 
Additionally, the card, as you may guess, is punched, like one used with antique computing systems. The pattern of holes comprises data, which I believe corresponds to the instructions for creating the item the card contains. That it is pre-punched suggests, suggests there is a way to punch an unpunched card, possibly imprinting it with the data for the item it contains, so no mechanism for this has presented itself yet. But the data on the card cannot be used to create the item directly, there is a middleman, that middleman is the totem lace. The totem lace. This is essentially the key carving machine. It will carve into your crucible dole a pattern of grooves and contours, the sort which makes the key unique. The instructions for this pattern are supplied by the punch card, which is inserted into the lace pre-activation to configure its chisels. Once the dowel is carved, you have a totem serving as your key, which can then be used to unlock the card items to the alchemeter. But at this point, I will diverge from my keymaking analogy and switch to a barcode analogy, which is not a terrible stranding or sleep to make, since the concept of a key and a barcode are essentially the same, one being a new pattern of grooves, the other of worrying, worrying black lights. The alchemeter. If you place a crooked dowel, carved or uncarved, on the alchemeter's small pedestal, its robotic arm will scan the contours with a laser. And the barcode analogy. This is a machine's way of reading the data originally imprinted from the card and transforming the data into a physical object. So typically, this is not done without expense, I believe. An uncarved dowel results in the creation of a perfectly generic object, which is a seemingly useless green cube. It costs two units of build crystal to make and I do not advise you to waste resources on it. There appears to be many other varieties of Quist, ostensibly used in combinations to create different sorts of items, which possibly offer some insight into the game's use of the term alchemy. But quite conveniently, there is an expansion to this. Creating the item on the pre-punched card costs nothing. It is good, because creating this item turns out to be essential. Now that you know this, you can, in your own time, begin the process. Once you're in a jet, naturally there is no going back, so best to be prepared. But you probably shouldn't drag your feet too long, as I mentioned earlier, this is your only means of escape. When you are ready, be prepared to follow the steps in the next section swiftly. So your cook's studer is ticking, do this to left. Bah, let me drink something that wear a lot of words. Yeah, pick it rose and she's looking at what she's looking at is not looking good. In the distance, meteorites fall with greater frequency. The fire and the force burn so hot not even the rain is putting it out. Yeah, like I said, Homestuck is doing a lot of info dumping at the beginning because there's a lot of world building and it can be a bit hard to understand it. So the author uses all kind of stuff to explain what's happening until it just goes to okay let's do a recap <laughs> and i don't know if i'm reading this recap because this is really just the comic with it's like summary <laughs> both check status of battery where's the battery we can see the letter battery is all right for now but it won't be for long if the power in the house doesn't come back on, you can think of one last resource, a small backup generator stored behind the mausoleum. Both prototypes write with Betty Quatter, Quaker box. What? Oh man, you are going to use that? That sucks. What a stupid idea. You have to hurry along. I'm running low on battery power. But the cake mix, ah, that's so dumb. I dumped it, matters. We might as well just use any old crap lying around. Fine, I guess. John, don't, don't be like that, please. The sprite is playing hard to get. You guess that's what you get for our originally prototyping it with something that engenders mischief and pranksterism. Do the potted vegetable instead. It looks delicious. Pipe down, you. This is Rose's decision, not yours. Rose, prototype sprite with Cecilka text. Oh yes, sweet. Now we are talking. See if you can distract it. I'll try to sneak up on it. John, flail about in a distracting manner. The spite finds a distracting manner in which you flail about to be rather distracting. The pesky sprite eludes you again. Not even the great colonel himself can outfox it. In narrowly missing with your attempt to create the colonel sprite, you drop the massive tome. The entire house rattles under the astonishing grass of the book. 
Und sie also boom, man aus echtes Stump und nur so Sprite, which is correct. Unaware by the dowsing. <laughs> Inspect Hag Ash incident. You find the psychic untoppled again. This time you're quite sure it wasn't your fault. The sprite is nowhere to be found. Both remove Crook's Luda from the doorway. Oh man, where did it go? I can't find it anywhere in the house. No time to worry about it. The next thing we should do is get your server copy of the game from the car. You need to connect to my client so I can repeat your steps and presumably join you wherever you are. We should do this quickly, before my house burns down. Wait, there's a fire? There will be soon. Oh jeez, so move the song already. It looks like it requires a lot of quiz to move. I don't have enough to relocate the door either. How much do you have? Zero. Oh, hmm. I thought about jumping the car from the ledge earlier, but that sounds really dangerous. I have a better idea. Meet me upstairs. Do again, as purple words say. You were about to head upstairs, but you thought you heard something behind you. It was faint, but you could swear it was a small, light-hearted chuckle. Along the lines, it was bewildered. Ho, ho, ho. Or is it hoo, hoo, hoo? I don't really know. <laughs> Ignore this woman's antics. Is the chat all right? Because I have the feeling Twitch is having a little bit of trouble connecting to it. If this goes again, then, then I will do it again. <laughs> With, uh... Let me look. Okay, the chat is all right. Yeah, and I'm just wondering where Panda is because she wanted to be there right away. Probably something, something went in her way. <laughs> you were not sure you even saw a woman, let alone any of her hypothetical antics, but whatever it was you might have caught a glimpse of, it sure gave you the release. You head upstairs on your way to the balcony. Your PDA is acting up again. Indulge the device, but be curt with it. Hey bro, check it out. I'm working on some new rhymes. Dude, I don't have time for your nerdy raps. Come on, this is hell of it'll just listen. It sounds like you don't even believe me that I was about to get blown up. What there really was, but now I'm in some weird dimension that suburbs sent me to or something. And now on top of that, I think I'm being haunted by my dead grandma. Huh? For real? Yeah, it's true, but I'll talk to you later about it. I think I could drop some sick rhymes about all this. When I see, I just don't think all the wrapping stuff is really as cool as I think it is. No, this will be dope. Check it. No, I have to go by. Wait, wait. Am I getting getting weight on us? But am I getting armed and dangerous? Sending men in space for saving us. See which player is more courageous. Pay no rules, dudes you to choose. Put the blow choose to use and upsuck it. A flex sullifies, I mean crucifies, would have to sluffice, I flug it. Bobby is staying lessened, up on a crest got in hella, Chris Blacker, yeah, yes. <laughs> Who's like offers that pussy flick enough this fucking savior fuss? Uh, Dave are these really words. We stain to ask per McLean Redux for bus can we remain to range of us. When a plan gone astray, pays off a wasted cray to us. Ashtray catering to layers of Matt McConaughey Waker remained at us. Wait, uh, McConaughey wasn't even in any of those Meteor movies, was he? Have to make a rap about. I don't know who is now calling me. <sighs> Ich 
Okay, I'm back. Normally I'm not getting cold on Sundays at this time. Okay, where was I? I don't know, Morgan Freeman or something. Being the president, it'll be called. Obama made it so that no one gives a shit about black presidents in movies anymore. See, you've got to fill me in on what's going on, so I have something to rap about besides all your dumb shit movies. Enough strange poetry from the wet text. You head out to the balcony to find out what Rose has in mind. She is messaging you again. The purple text is less irrational than the wet text. I am lifting the car up to the balcony. Wow, okay. Once it is up, retrieve the game. Then I put it back down on the driveway. But the door is locked. Then break a window. But it's my dad's car. It's just a window. This is sort of an emergency. Otherwise, I promise I'll handle the car with velvet gloves. Alright. Rose, pick up car. Connection lost. <laughs> well, this didn't work out. Ridiculous folly, inexcusable. You are inclined to agree, but hey, accidents happen. You double check your PDA to make sure if Rose is really gone. Indeed, this seems to be the case. Tichi is still pestering you, of course, but another chum is now locked in as well. What color are the words that this chum says? I am back! Oh, hi! I went to investigate the explosion I heard. Was it by any chance a meteor? Yes! How did you know? Oh man, that's kind of a long story. Anyway, are you okay? Did it blow up your yard or start a fire or anything? No, I'm fine. Then it a pretty good race from my house and I went to look at it and it's pretty big. But Beck doesn't want me to go near it. So I came home. He seems to think it's dangerous. Well, gosh, he's probably right. Anyway, what have you been up to, John? Oh, did you get my package yet? Uh, yeah, I was trying to get it, but Rose dropped my car into a weird spooky bottomless pit and the package was on the car and I'm really sorry about it. Oh, no. Oh, okay, I guess I should start at the beginning. See, a meteor blew up my neighborhood. That's terrible, John. I'm so sorry, but I'm okay and my house is too, sort of. That game I was telling you about, supper, which I was playing with Rose, sort of transported me somewhere at the last minute. But now I'm trapped here, and it's weird and dark, and I can't find my dad, and I just lost the car, and my copy of the game in the pit, and I think I have to save the world from the apocalypse. Well, it sounds really crazy and kind of scary, but it also sounds kind of exciting. I don't know, John, maybe this is your destiny. If anyone can save the world, I think it is probably you. Well, you think so? Yes. Well, okay, but... It's not even that simple. I was about to connect to Rose to help transport her and serve her for meteors and fire and stuff, but she lost battery power and I lost the game disc. So I think I have to get Tichi to use his copy to save her, but that jackass won't shut up and stop wiping and stuff. Ha 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 ha, he's so silly. Yeah, anyway, I should talk to him about it, so be right back. The green text was attractive. Now view the red text again. When the film crew zooms where the president's at, I'm like if the dude's black I lead my head. Turns out he is. So we're all damn directors got grumption. Like we all flip our shit, he ain't shining shoes or something. It's called free emancipation. If it's not pre-selection, it's got ascension. And Bruce Almighty whoops to fool Bruce from the one I just mentioned. Ah, I'm sorry, I can't rap. Can explain to me why this ain't condescension to think I'll shit a brick. Not even he can convey the intention with his quick spun wit. Whether the fray or the ten him sit on his lap while he whittles a splint, and some guys eyes what he does and patronize, I guess necrosity is a mother of invention. Stop rapping for a second, your horse's ass. I have something important to talk about. What's up? Rose is in trouble and she needs help. I was going to connect to her with supper, but I lost my copy. Okay. Although she lost battery power, if she can get back up and running, she'll need someone with the game to get her out of there before her house burns down. So I think you should use your copy of the game to help her. My copy? That's going to be tough. Why? I lost it. It's a stupid story and I'd rather not talk about it. Should be embarrassing you. I thought you said you had two. Well, yeah, one is my brother's copy. Okay, well, get his son. Alright, but he's not gonna be happy about that. Whatever. 
Also, you might want to read those works to get up to speed on this. Oh man, what? Nothing, really. Look, all I'm saying is the girl tends to lay it on kinda sick, you know? Folks' eyes. Your laptop is out of battery power, there's only one thing left to do. Time to make your way to the backup generator. Close, knit laptop cozy to shield your laptop from the rain. That would be such a waste of time. Besides, you already knitted one a while ago. You retrieve it from your knitting bag and apply it to your laptop. You capture Loke's laptop plus cozy. Both equip Grimmer to strive specibus. That would be incredibly ill advised. <laughs> we can see the horror terror series. There are some dark forces you just don't want to mess around with. You understand this better than most. You put the back down. Uh, you put the book down. Both recapture Loke your items. You grab the knitting bag and the grimoire in that order. It's always a logical skill puzzle with your three motors. The three auto balances leaving the knitting bag accessible in the wound card. Both allocate knitting needles to strife specibus. You feel a lot more comfortable with this as a weapon. You are so handy with those needles. You feel like you could probably use them to fillet a swordfish. <laughs> Laptop knit sweater, yes. <laughs> You lose a wood card in the process, so wearing the tree. Hey, careful with all that stuff. Both knit plush cuddle Cthulhu to soothe nerves. That would also be a preposterous waste of time. Besides, you are quite sure you never heard of this creature called Cthulhu before. There are, however, many other specimens of the Cthulhu truly dubious you are familiar with, such as both consult the Grimar. Flutulu. <laughs> Flutulu fall patrician of misery to hear his memo spelly gurgle is to know the epoch of joy has come to an abrupt end. And Nupriglit, chambers king of grotesquery, with lord of the moist beyond hood. Hearing his melodious curbs and tongue clicks cause one's bones to explode. And of course there's Oglogos, the deep one. Whenever he grinds his teeth, all the children of a random galaxy somewhere will frown. Continuously for a 9,000 year span, he is the first and smallest of the smaller gods appointed in servitude of a while, and fascinating pantheon of middling gods which caters to the whims of the noble circle of horror terrors, an omniscient, omnipotent order of the elite few, forever cloaked in the darkness of the furthest ring. Believe me or not, a lot of the stuff is really important information for later. <laughs> And then there's a strange page containing some rather mysterious notes and summoning procedures. You've never been quite sure what these diagrams are getting at. Both take items and proceed downstairs. You will recapture look everything the way you want it to appear in the tree and head downstairs. You figure that's a nasty little thing. Time to get a move on. Ah, we have animation here. You wonder if this rain will ever let up. It's driven since the months began, perhaps long enough to forgot, forget its purpose. It's no longer even nose to a search fire. Somewhere a seller's god reads the strings, between the clouds and the earth, preparing for a symphony it fears impossible to play. And so it streets on and on, delaying the ways of the conductor's baton. How you hate this season. April is the coolest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dual roots with spring rain, American sport legends. Charles Buckley. Rose, confront mother in hall. Surely your mother is lurking nearby. You should be prepared for an unpleasant confront. Oh, Spike. <laughs> what? This is really cool dude, okay? He's standing around being all chill. Like cool dudes are known to do sometimes. A cool dude like this probably has a real cool name, but he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too busy for that. Busy being totally sweet. But you could always try to guess his name. And if you were right, he might not ever so slightly. That's a cool dude's way of letting you know there might just be hope for you yet. And her name. In the freak. <laughs> this guy doesn't have time for the sort of bullshit. <laughs> Try again. Dave Strider. Examine room. Ah, I was waiting to get to Dave. Your name is Dave. It is an unseasonable warm April day. Your bedroom window is open to let some air in and your fan is cranked. Actually, even more cranked would be your flybeats, which brings us to your variety of interests. A cool dude like you is sure to have plenty. 
You have a penchant for spinning out unbelievably ill jams with your turntables and mixing gear. You like to wave about band, bands no one's ever heard of but you. You collect weird dead things preserved in various ways. You are an amateur photographer and operate your own makeshift dark room. You maintain a number of ironically humorous blogs, websites and social networking profiles. And if the inspiration strikes, you won't hesitate to drop some fat rhymes on a mofo and represent. What will you do? Let's look at this room for a minute. For a minute. Oh, I like the bad covers. <laughs> it's a card. It's a card, so neat. Yeah, I see the turntables and the fan. Wires, wires everywhere. Yes. Dave is all about the technology. Dave quickly retrieves arms from cinder blocks. Nah. Dave, get the damn beta and save your friend's life. The notion strikes you as nonsensical. You can't imagine how a video game could save someone's life, and in any case, you are quite sure no one you know is in any danger. Anyway, these are your copies of the beta you received in the mail recently. You've labeled them with your name and bold red print to distinguish them from your bros copies, who labeled his in kind. Neither of you really gives a shit about this game or has any intention of playing it, but you'll be damned if you let that get in the way of your campaign of one-upmanship. Dave, bleed like a goat and piss on your turntable. <laughs> An X display would be cool, yes. <laughs> you would never consider allowing any fluid even remotely with something in your way. You win to touch your head, pillars, turntables. That would, that would worst breaking them and the world without the gift of your godly sounds just doesn't sound like a place you want any part of. While you are at it, you might as well wipe out human civilization with a meteor or something ridiculous like that, which will probably never happen. That, song, that sort of thing only happens in stupid idiot movies for stupid idiots. You will, however, contemplate bleeding like a goat for ironically from your worst purpose at a later date. Dave, examine closet. This is your closet. This is where you keep a lot of your crap. Like the box and the bottle of what is that? Is that? Dave, check the blue box. This is a package that your friend John Eckbert sent you for, the, for your 13th birthday a little while ago. It now contains nothing except a note and a certificate of authenticity vouching for the genuine in Hollywood memorabilia which the box originally contained, and which you are now wearing to be ironic, but also to be incredibly cool in a way somehow integrably related to the ironic nature of the accessory. You find it sort of exasperating to explain these subtleties to people. The box also included a signed photo of Ben Stiller, which now proudly hangs above your closet. Proudly and ironically. Dave, take box. You capture lock the box through your hash map fetch modus. Your modus cover and hash function resolves the index by valuing each consonant at 2 and each vowel at 1. The total is divided by your number of cards and the remainder is the index box. 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. 5 divided to 10 is 5. The box is capture log and card 5. Dave, examine jar of unknown yellow substance in the closet. I find it curious that the characters always start with those do this bad idea on your belongings prompt. This is easy to explain uh, in the beginning. Homestuck had like um, user suggestions. The users could put in success, su suggestions for the characters to do. And this is why there is a lot of nonsense at the beginning, because the users were like being funny. And of course they were immature like fuck. <laughs> but in the end uh, the box was closed off for the story. Oh, hell yes. It is an un un unopened container of apple juice. You thought you were all out. It is like fucking Christmas up in here. This is so great. You've got to tell John about this immediately. He'll be so excited. Dave, take juice. You capture loads of juice into card 7. 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 divided to 10, 7. Dave, access Pester Jam and Pester John. In addition to letting your buddy know about this outstanding juice windfall, you figure you'll wish him a happy birthday while you were at it, in your own cool sort of roundabout way, of course. Good thing you looked at the box he sent you, or you might have forgotten. You also might as well ask him about that beta. The kid's been harping about it for weeks. It would be cool if it came on his birthday, he'd be one happy camper. You will in this character say word things, really? Complete bullshit and ill beats. Just 
torch speaks a bit of touch. <laughs> Hey, so what sort of insane loot did you wake in today? I got a little monster's poster, it's so awesome. I'm going to watch it again today. The apple juice scene was so funny. Oh hell, that is such a coincidence. I just found an unopened container of apple juice in my closet. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. Okay, that's fine, but I have just that I just have one question and then a word of caution. Have you ever seen a movie called Little Monster starring Howie Mandel and Fred Savage, but the seal on the bottle is unbroken? Are you suggesting someone put piss in my apple juice at the factory? All I'm saying is, don't you think Monster Howie Mandel has the power to do something as simple as reseal a bottle? Try using your boy numb nuts. Why did the fat kid or whoever drank it know what piss tastes like? I mean, his reaction was nigh instantaneous. It was the 15th day in a row Howie Mandel peed in his juice. Okay, I can accept that. Monster Beelis celebrity douchebags are cunning and persistent pranksters. Also, Fred Savage has a really punchable face, but who cares about his slats? Let's stop talking about it. Did you get the beta yet? No, did you? Man, I got two copies already, but I don't care. I'm not going to play or do anything. The game sounds boring. Did you see how it got slammed in Game Bro? Game Bro is a joke and we both know it. Yeah, why don't you go check your mail? Maybe it's there now. Alright. Dave, go online and use sites indicative of your interests. You open the Hefe Estes web browser and direct it to your ironically maintained blog where you post monthly satirical reviews of Game Bro magazine. Your latest post is a review of the March issue. Yeah, this is so 2019-ish a thing. <laughs> you've been meaning to write a review for the latest issue too, and you've been sort of dogging it. Something about the game they are reviewing just doesn't strike you as right for the typical purpose. In a new tab, you open another one of your sites, a webcomic ironically maintains to a satirical cipher vaguely similar to that of your blog. It's called Sweet Bro and Hala Jeff. So actually, there, this was a comic that Andrew Hossi was doing before Homestuck. Uh, we just have to look at this one, because there are like 47 or them <laughs> of them. I can't wait to be used this pit of shit all day and play all these games. Fuck, I'm falling down all these stairs. I warned you about stairs, bro. I told you, dog. It keeps happening. I told you, man. I told you about stairs. So yeah. Like I said, there are 46 of these things and I don't want to read them all. Because they are all of this quality. <laughs> but I really like how the browser changes when you open it up. We don't really see this anymore today, I have to say this right now. It was normal that your browser would change around colors because people would have their websites and stuff and they would make it so that your browser would reflect the website and we kind of don't have this anymore and I'm, I'm missing it. Hello Panda, I'm why I was wondering. You have legions of devoted fans, most of whom are totally convinced of your creative persona sincerity, which is just how you like it. Dave, check the latest page of the Midnight Crew. You figure as long as you are chilling at your computer, you might as well see how that new MSPA story is going. You haven't looked at it in a while. I was wondering where you were, Panda, because you said you could watch the whole thing. <laughs> I need to open a new bottle because this involves a lot of reading. I need to hydrate myself all the time. The Midnight Crew. You are members of a sinister gang called the Midnight Crew. Your nefarious plots are serpentine and complexity. Your schemes convoluted. You are planning a heist in your underground hideout. What will you do? Use Occam's razor on plans and schemes. Spade Slick. Use Occam's razor to carve a circular hole into the haste plans, freeing it from the knife. You wonder what Morwen would jam the knife so hard into the table in the first place. SS. Climb the ladder and exit hideout. Implement nefarious plots. <laughs> oh, okay. No wonder that you were late. You push against the manhole cover, but it seems an unbelievable Jack has parked your getaway van on top of it. A familiar feeling stirs, that feeling is overwhelming, so blackening rage. It's a sort of rage that'll make a man feel totally justified in sporting an unnecessarily elaborate assortment of fancy plates. Dave, skip ahead a hundred pages or so. You don't remember where you last left off, so you wait jump ahead. You always forget to save your place in the story. It looks like tempers have become short in this pressure cooker already. We speculate that the tipping point may have been an ill-advised motion for a game of 52 pickup. Dave, save your place, read it later. 
Even though the adventure began, began recently, it's already over 3000 pages long. You just don't have time for this bullshit. You'll catch up later. Besides, it looks like someone's pestering you. You're pretty sure you know who it is. Dave, on the chum. In some cultures, the persistent refusal of a lady's invitation to play a game with her would be a sign wanting disrespect. I said a flagrant homosexuality. What? Oh no, no look, I'm busy, okay? I've got a lot of shit on my plate. I'm sort of a big deal, okay? I know, sometimes I wonder how you are ever allowed to pay for meals in restaurants. It must be hard to keep a low profile when you are always overhearing odd voices whisper. It's that guy who has a blog. Seriously, dudes be worshipping me left and right. I can't hardly walk down the street without stepping over torsos of the prostrate. Navigating the urban landscape, I'm sure, is difficult enough. Without an obstacle course of differential flesh and skyward as a spurts, adapting the art of parkour to your unique environment would help. Yeah, I mean, damn, like there's a scruffy little shit at my feet. An orphan or something I don't know. Face flush on the pavement? I am like dude, you're listening for a stampede of buffaloes or something. He waves a look at me, then gives my shoe a little kiss and scurries the fuck off. Heavy is a crown. Yeah, it's it's Dave and Rose, it's always like it with something ironic and sarcastic at the same time. <laughs> yeah, not kicking Oliver Twist in the fucking face every day is my gift to the world, I guess. Breathtaking magnanimity. Among other things, I just give and fucking give. Indeed, now we are jewel tumbles from your wish box of daily exploits, which I imagine does not sparkle. Oh, for fuck's sake, you are just lobbying for me to play the dump game. Baseless accusation. Look, I'm telling you, Eckbert is all about that game. He will play it with you and probably be tickled retarded about it. I know this very well. I cannot hasten his mail's delivery, however. Yeah, yeah, I hassle him some more about it. And look, how about this? If you ever find yourself in the position where your life depends on me playing that piece of shit game, then I'll play. Will that make you happy? More than you know. It perfectly modifies my grief over the demise of chivalry. John, what are you doing? Stop doing nothing! Meanwhile, in the present, in a place where the present may be a concept of dubious merit, John is spacing out. But awake and forceful thought holds him to attention. Or maybe it is a bumping sound coming from the other side of the door. What is that? A thick, unpleasant fluid pools from beneath the door. Troubling. Investigate this. There's a trail of this fluid in the hall, leading to your room. Dave, play some hauntingly thick beats. You've had enough of the computer for a while. You feel like you've been messing around on it all week. It's time to get your jam on. You pull up to your trusty AKA1 MPC thousand sampler and prepare to get sick and nasty. Oh, there are a lot of songs here. Left knob volume for cover and sample, right knob master volume, stop pattern in F, F1, F2, F3 buttons. Okay. Let's listen a little. Wait, I can, I can play them all at once. I need to hear this. Oh my god, this is, this is awful. Ghostbusters, I came on the radio earlier. <laughs> Okay, there's Harlequin here, I wanna find it. <laughs> I kinda like this one. the ghost boss I've seen so far. I think this could be the ghost boss I've seen.
fair enough music. Dave takes a sip of the apple juice despite what John said. Those beats were so fresh they belong in the photos, I yell. Is what you are talking about. Soccer might be something that shit for wipers like melons. Know what I'm saying? After beats that fresh, it would be a crime not to reward yourself as a celebratory trick. 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 divided to 10 is 7. You can't do it. John's got you all twisted up inside now. All you can think about is Mendel's gross monster piss. Damn you, Eckbert! Your recapture looks at you. Dave, allocate sword to strife specibus. Your strife specibus is already allocated with a blade kind of sweater. There's no need to allocate it. You can wield your sweet ninja sword as a weapon once it is in your strife deck, but you will have to capture lock it first before moving it there. Yes, bottle pissing. <laughs> It apparently is a scene of some B movie that John likes. What was it called? Little Monsters or something? Dave, capture log sword. The ninja sword 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2, plus two uh, equals 17 divided to 10 is 7 occupies the same card as the juice. 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7 divided to 10 is 7. Expelling the juice from your solar decks. It splashes all over your turntables and your copies of the beta. Ark! Dave, get a towel or something. <laughs> you head out to get a towel from the bathroom across the hall. You glance at one of the many radical puppets in your bro's collection and not an approval. Is there anything not awesome about your bro? No, you think not. You enter the bathroom. There's a damn towel on the floor you can probably use for this crisis. You stop to pay a little respect to one of your bros boys up there. Hey little man, how's it hanging? Dave, capture low damp towel. You take the damp towel. 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2, plus two equals 15 divided to 10, 5. Expelling the box. 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 5 divided to 10 is 5. <sighs> Dave, search the bathroom for something slightly less damp. Now, you just decide to wring this towel out into the toilet to make it less damp. It is now just a towel. 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 8 divided to 10 is 8. Dave, take towel. You take the towel and grab the box again while you are at it. Behold, mass. <laughs> yes. Dave, clean up the juice. You clean 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 8 up the juice with a towel and hang the damp beater better envelopes in your line to dry off. Uh, yeah, it's Dave Silodex. He kinda has to uh, count count the, the letters in a word and then it getting the faults can get into a Silodex. What was the rules? Two for a consonant and one for a vowel, right? In the breeze of the fan, the betas trostle near the open window. This arrangement is a little disconcerting, as if allowed, it sure would be a stupid way to lose them. Dave, turn off the fan. The crisis is easily averted. You can't imagine it will ever resurface later in any way, shape or form. That better is as good as yours. Forever. You should probably go past the Eckbert again. You wonder if he found the better yet. You also might chat about your respective Silidis and fetch Modi if the topic happens to come up. You wonder if he is anywhere near as smooth with the Silidex as you are. Probably not. Probably not even humanly possible. Yes, he is good at boss. Okay, I will be gone for a minute because my dryer is done. You know, I always do the laundry on Sundays. And it's really going my nerves, so I have to switch it off.
guys, it's hot today. I have my fan and I'm still sweating. Suddenly a bombardier's crow flies in the open window and snatches a beta, possibly to make a nest with, or maybe just for the sake of being a brainless feathery asshole. You yell at the bird. Stop! <laughs> Look, this is how we get stuff out of his Siladex, his words. You accidentally launch a ninja sword. Everything goes flying out the window, dead bird and all. <laughs> No one can ever know about this. Dave, look out window. Yeah, you can kiss all that stuff goodbye. You feel sorry for the bird, but at least you never planned on ever using that beta ever. Anyway, now that bit of ugliness is behind you. You guess you can look forward to several more hours of messing around in your room. Wow, wait, what? Back to Rose, hm? You prepare to descend the stairs to your living room. You are standing eye to eye with a familiar foe, a 20 foot tall granite statue of the mighty wizard Cesar Pan the Learned. Your mother had him installed through a hole in the roof with a heavy duty grain. Just look at the mystical gates. To peer into those aloof glass and eyes is to arrest the curiosity of any mortal. To behold the wisdom concealed in the feathers of the venerable face is to know the ceaseless joys of wonderment itself. Any man so fortunate as to catch as Kansas, Mary Twinkle, or Twitch of Whiskers shall surely have all his dreams fulfilled. God, we need, I need a dictionary again. <laughs> you find this grisly abomination utterly detestable. I really, really love Rose's upset face, he's so cute. Rose, Spiker and Elias Mother's laugh of wizard. Of wizards. She has nothing to Spiker and Elias. Your mother clearly has no real affinity for these damnable things, she only collects them to spite you. If anything, she finds it even more repentance than you do. She's just a committed woman. Rose, go downstairs to the kitchen back door. You descend to the living room a rear of your home's expensive open layout. There is a sound of rushing water beneath the floor. It tends to strike guests as a strange presence in the living space, but it's become hardly audible to use to familiarity. Oh, how do you pronounce this? Familiarity. There's a front door, but hopefully there's no need to make the long trek around the house in the way. You might as well see if you can slip through the kitchen and out the back unnoticed. Both, you mother solid copper vacuum stager. Okay, but it's bronze, not copper. But it wasn't always. A while ago you gave this as an ironic gift to your mom for Mother's Day. You even customized it with a drink holder to support one of her drinkages alcoholic beverages. She liked the gift so much she had it bronze and put it on this pedestal. She even left it plugged in so it can still be turned on now and then. But never to do any cleaning. It never leaves this display. Sometimes at night, when you are in your room, you can hear it wailing from downstairs. She must know you can hear it. She's completely deranged. Both grab the Eldritch Princess. It's too big to capture Oak. Not that you would want to move it anyway. The pretty princess doll has been sitting there for months. Ever since your mother got this abomination for your birthday, it's a totally passive aggressive gesture. You decided to make it much less abominable by knitting her majesty a new hat and new arms. Now it brings a mischievous smile to your face whenever you walk by. Your mother hasn't removed the doll yet and probably never will. She would never be the one to blink first. Oh, you got it, yes. Foo, mill, e, r, o, t, you got it, thank you. Both acquire umbrella for protection from elements. Oh, you comes before. Uh, you comes after L. You comes before we. You are going to have a hell of a time assessing that card when you need it. You guess you'll just cross that bridge later. Eh, would be easy in German because that's called the Regenschirm and it's starting with R. Rose, peek inside kitchen. The liquid bottles are out in full force. Mom is surely nearby. Rose, investigate richly colored object in the middle of screen. That would be your refrigerator. Both surfaces have custom the lobby, served as a battlefield for a chilly siege of passive aggressive one upmanship. You don't need to worry about the P in spy spike uh, so sai. So like this. P is silent. This was a drawing you This was a drawing you did of your cat Jespers when you were younger, along with a poem about him. Your mother bought this as tonsious 
50,000 dollar for input and well to the door. Yes, yes, we call in a wall of rain shield. <laughs> I forgot that you're learning German. Using the colorful magnet letters, you simply left a succinct message which may or may not have been directed towards anyone in particular, but you couldn't find the letter W, so just took two weeks together. Shwoo! <laughs> your mother then purchased a fresh pack of W's and left them there for your convenience. Appreciative of the thoughtful gesture, you left her a sincere thank you note which you had likely not to rise and then marked with a drop of blood. What is the shield against the rain? Yes, you are very right. But part of it was touching the floor, so your mother was kind enough to lift the lower portion of the document with a velvet pillow. Both attached W to face as a fake moustache. This is incredibly silly, and you are not sure how it fits into your campaign against your mother, or getting your computer back online to escape your doom, but it's hard to resist getting a little silly sometimes. Especially when you are absolutely positive no one is watching. Yes, we all have been a little silly. Both capture look W. W comes uh, after L. W comes. Wait. After V. <laughs> oh, it's just I couldn't do the alphabet for a moment. But that unsightly road in the W pack won't do, nor will the gash in the plastic. You deposit 12 cents in its place, which is your approximation of the letter's value. You also make a vow to return later and meet this through the plastic shop. Life is made up of little silly moments, you are so right. Both, think of ways to one-up mother. You wonder how to address the pillow situation. It seems the woman has your declared disadvantage. Perhaps slipping a fresh doily under the pillow will do the trick. Or maybe spilling a bit of Rochestershire sauce on it, and then having it dry cleaned and returned along with a laboriously ingratiating apology note. No, there's no time for anything like that. Or maybe, just thinking out loud here, you could use the entire pack of W's as M's? Oh yes, that would burn. Umbrella comes with the Italian word umbrella and English umbra, both meaning shade. Oh, you're right. But we are using it for rain. But there's also the sun umbrella, I guess. Also, yes, I can pronounce what Chestershire sauce, but I can't pronounce ingratiating. Why are people having so much trouble with this sauce word? But you've already done something with the W pack and there's no need to go back and guilt that lily. This is delicate business and that pillow is screaming for the bottle. Rose, capture long velvet pillow. You decide to take the velvet pillow and lovingly embroider a poem in praise of motherhood on it. Hopefully you can pull this off with the notice before she noticed it's gone. V L V V V U. But it causes your tree to be pretty badly unbalanced and surely will auto-balance itself in a moment. English is my first language and even I hate that stupid word. The ingretti what word? And just like that, the umbrella becomes accessible in the root card. That's one of the things you laugh about the tree modus. The happy surprises. Both head out the back door. Okay, enough's enough. Time to get... Ah! You don't know how she does that. You are never safe in this house. And of all things to be doing during a power outage, she's up to her ironic housewife routine again. That mop bucket doesn't even have any water in it. What an absolute mad woman. Both hop over counter, landing in a roll. It's a sauce one. What is so hard? What Chestershire sauce? I must be an eldritch being. This bird's got a fly. Use roll. Now the goddamn stupid wizards. Meanwhile, in the past again. You're almost done patching up the hole in your window with the gaffer tape. But it's sort of hard to get any work done when people keep pestering you all day. You guess you better get that. Dave, on the chum. Garden Gnosti began pestering. Turn tech got head at 1836. Hi Dave, hey sub. Not much sub with you, bro. He he he. Ah, good one. So white being chill, I guess you know how it goes. Great. Feeling cool today? Uh, Mr. Cool Guy? Oh man, you know it. So cool. You know, shit is ice cold up in here. Shit is weak bananas, I'm telling you. So have you talked to John today? Yeah, we were just talking a while ago about how he sucks at his syllabix. Can you believe he uses stacks? That kid is ridiculous. Lol. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun. 
What was the genius again? Wait, never mind. Oh, for God, whenever we talk about the goofy moduses, I get a migraine. What do you want with John? I want to tell him happy birthday and ask him about his birthday package. Oh, yeah. I was being sort of catchy and told him to check the mail because I was wondering if mine came yet. I think it did. Yeah. Yeah? And I think mine came too, so, uh, I guess you want to know if he likes it or something. No, he will not open it. He will lose it. Uh, ooh, well, so we do hear that, I guess. No, it's good actually, because we will find it again later when he really needs it, which of course is why I sent it in the first place. See, like, I never get how you know the things. I don't know, I just know that I know. Hmm, alright. Anyway, I have to go. I have to feedback, which is always a bit of an undertaking. Man, if I were you, I would just take that fucking devil beast out behind the woodshed and blow its head off. Hehehe, <laughs> I don't think I could if I tried. Yeah, say hi to your granddad for me too, okay? Yes, I guess an encounter with him is almost certain. It is usually intense. Well, yeah, isn't it always with family? But he sounds like a total badass. Yeah, he totally is. Anyway, got to go. See ya. Yeah, I know you both have the same color for me. It's kind of <laughs> distracting. Dave, get phone. It would be handy to have your phone. 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 8 divided to 10. Um, equals 8 on standby, so you don't always have to go back to your computer whenever someone pesters you. This way you can text message 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 18 divided to 10, 8. People no matter where you are what outrageously cool thing you are up to. Yeah, you're also the same green on my end. So cool. John, first I adversary into that room. And even meanwhile, in the present, sort of. Once again, the slippery antagonist eludes you. You only find more of these unpleasant oily smears. Someone is pestering you. Both your PDA and computer register the message. This chum will know what to do. So pester lock. Alright, I'm out of my room now, looking for my Rose game. Oh good. Yes, there's no sign of Rose yet. I hope she is okay. Well, if he comes back, I'll be ready. You better know what you're talking about, cause this could get ugly. Bought my phone and I also took my awesome katana with me in case things get too hot to handle. And they always do. You mean the cheap piece of shit you have on your wall? <laughs> it's sharp and it's awesome and it's a sword. End of story. Okay, I don't really care. I'm in my room again. I really think there's someone else in this house. Like monsters or something. Howie? Haha, uh -huh, I wish. Dude, monsters are unreal. That stupid kid stuff with stupid babies. Maybe? Yeah, you're right. What are you, an idiot? Of course there are monsters in your house. You're in some weird evil monster dimension. Come on, skepticism is a crutch of cinematic troglodytes. Like, hey mom, dad, there's a dinosaur, a ghost, or whatever in my room. Yeah, right, Junior, go back to bed. Fuck you, mom and dad, how many times are we going to watch this trope unfold? It wasn't get them funny the first time I saw it. Just once, I'd like to see dad crap his pants when a kid says there's a womp vampire in his closet. Oh shit, everyone in the minivan! Be fucking dead of the year right there. Okay, okay, stop. What do I do? What do you have? A hammer? Man, so lame. Okay, whatever. I should look into weaponizing your syllabics. My bro is always getting on my case about it, but man, it's not so as easy as it sounds. But you are fighting monsters left and right, you don't have much choice. Hmm, okay, I guess I can read up on data structures some more. How it's going there? I'm out in the living room, he's usually here, but I don't see him. Might be playing his mind games, he's always pulling his, his ninja shit. All I see is little Kel over there, so I guess he can't be far. Ah ha oh god, so lame. What? See, I just don't know why you think it's cool. His rent will accuse the whipping thing. Oh, little Kel, no man. Little Kel has a shit. That's fine, you are entitled to your opinion. I'm just saying that being a white guy who is a whipper with a rent will accuse doll is not cool by any stretch of the imagination or by any definition of what cool I want to go otherwise. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, bullshit. Kel is dope. Puppets are awesome. John Eckbert blows. The end. Yeah, more like the episode of all those things is the things that is true. I'm going to read. Good luck with your bro. Things locks at F you isn't fuck you. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is what it means. I always think it's... I always think it's... I fuck it is inside completely. Read your book. Stay wary of these foes. <laughs> Monsters. Only retarded babies who poop in the diapers believe in that stuff. I mean, I see a monster right here. Rose, use wall right out the front door. Okay, time for battle. Oh, strife, it's called strife here. A grief. This isn't doing a lot. 
Lotto Paui. <lacht> Egg was? Pacify loves this one. Empty Suicide Strand. Empty Uhr. Guardian Wubik. Watch, I couldn't say it. A pony. <laughs> Beautiful pony. <laughs> I want in that Yeah, we could do this yeah, all the time. Now we have to go to the next page. Looks like Mom has satisfied her S drive quota for the day. She simply returns to her housework. No point in going out the front door anymore. Might as well head out the back like you originally planned. Both first, be the pony. Second, trample Mom. You can't be the stupid pony, and frankly, you can't imagine why anyone would want to. But you give the pony a grudging pat on the snout anyway. Her name is Maple Hoof. John, turn around! Data structures for assholes, chapter 7. God damn it, why do I even bother? The good news, finally your revolting incompetence can be put to use. Instead of accidentally firing a silodex full of steak knives into a priceless oil painting or your beloved grand aunt, you can turn that fumbling theory towards one of your foes, such as the ability to grasp painfully simple concepts. The bad news, I'm tired of explaining myself forced to you gibbering fuck fuckrats. In this chapter, I will be phoning it in with a liberal use of diagrams and shitty clip art. What are you going to do about it? You are going to wiggle in your own wishes secretions like the worms you are, that's what. Here, learn something for a change. So, okay. See? We see the bricks here. And then, if we put something new in here, the brick will get out. Asshole notes. Press your lips together to form a stiff pucker. Apply them firmly to my rear end. I now pronounce you man and wife. Now, get in the kitchen and make my ass some dinner, bitch. You are trying to read, okay? This book is already unpleasant enough as it is without weird voices in your head nagging you to do sex. Besides, I thought we already agreed there's no such thing as monsters. There are a few exclamation marks. Fine, don't interrupt your reading and turn around, but you don't see what costs the reason. Oh my god, it's a monster! Don't move, or the bunny gets it! <laughs> Okay, put the bunny back in the box. <laughs> oh, John, please. This was not good. I want to listen to the music a little more because it's so good. Rose, except. You leave to the back door. Nearby is a transformer which distributes electricity from the underground generator powered by the river flowing beneath your house. The transformer was struck by lightning so, and no longer works. You wonder if your mother has any plans to have it fixed. You guess she'd rather just play her mind games in a dark house like a weirdo. You can see the mausoleum and the portable generator across your backyard. You are almost there. Both use umbrella. This was so clear that it would happen. <laughs> Oh man, I love how the magnetic V just went there. Yeah, it's a W. Sorry, I, I was too used to my German spelling. You regather your items and begin the soggy trek. Mostly in what? Get up, John. This is no time for slumber. Strive. Ah, we can now. Evo keys. Or W S day to walk. Spaceball trek. I will use the Evo keys. Okay. Doesn't seem too hard. Are you going to attack? Oh, he's going to attack. Hell's while. John, come up. Don't want to stand up. He's such a pussy. Both forgot the W and make haste to the mausoleum. Between the W never cross, even crossed your mind, it's just a stupid magnet. John, salvage your weapon and fight on! Strive again! Pick up! Oh, oopsie. This was with a mouse. Pick up! Oh, we are using the little decks now. <laughs> this won't work much. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, 
Chris was cool. We won. And we can pick up some stuff. You said put the bunny back in the box. No, why couldn't you put the bunny back in the box? Now exult, victory spoils are yours. Let's take a moment and read all these ridiculous words. Queen tag, new squirt, plucky tot, fidgety pupil water, ankle biter, champ fry, pesky urchin, nipper cadet, wave sprout, cool buckaroo, knee high pilgrim, mobbot of destiny, get about pipsqueak, boy scalag, wampus buster, load star use. He also got some money, 125, and some cage limit and stuff. The amazing victory allows you to scale the first two achievement ranks on your echo ladder. You are now a plucky tot with a new feather and your cap to show for it. The echo ladder rewards your bold ascent with 125 boon dollars. You waste little time in storing them in your keramic talk hollow. Additionally, climbing the ranks has boosted your gal viscosity and cage limit. By expanding your cage limit, you've made room for all that nice grist you just collected. You now have 32 fragments of built grist and 10 fragments of shale. What about that card? It seems the shale limit allocated the bunny to its stray specibus. Sort of a stupid thing to use for a weapon, but you might as well wrap it and stick the bunny in your strife deck while you are at it. It will at the very least be safer there. Okay. Bunny kind and handle kind. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the hammer was <laughs> broken. You group the two specibi in your strife portfolio. No self-respecting strifer would be caught dead without one. Guess are the scattered bits of your large hammer. Oddly enough, it seems breaking the sledgehammer altered the abstitus from hammer kind to handle kind, even going as far as pulling the head of your smaller hammer from your deck to force compliance. You didn't even notice in the heat of the battle. You grab the sledgehammer handle, expelling the useless harlequin figurine. Now repair the hammer. You merge the sledgehammer head with its handle and return it to your strife deck, repairing the hammer kind abstitus in the process. The smaller hammer handle is ejected from the deck, since of course handles of any sort no longer belong in there, obviously. Fine, now what? Dave is pestering you, but you don't have time to deal with this nonsense right now. Something is amiss in your room, you can't quite put your finger on it. Both, hurry and activate the generator. You fire up the generator and drag a cord in through the mausoleum. It of course would be foolish to run the generator inside a confined space. Generator safety is everyone's business. Rose, defile tomb. Uh, tomb. Sorry, Jaspers, have to make space for the laptop. Oh no, as a cat is <laughs> the dead cat is wearing little suit. Besides, your final resting place is already a mockery. You should have decomposed near the under bed of petunias like a normal cat. Not given to a taxidermist and fit with a tiny custom tailored suit and then stuffed in a coffin built for infants. Both plug in your laptop. You plug in your laptop and connect to the internet signal again. Everything predictably falls out of your solidex, but you're not about to get bent out of shape about it. You have bigger fish to fry. Looks like they've noticed you are back online, he pesters you like clockwork. And then there's John. What on earth is he up to now? The door, John. Look at the door. You are right, didn't Rose yank the door of its hint and prop it on your bed? Someone or something has put it back and left it slightly ajar. Incredibly alarming. Investigate. Ho 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 ho. What? This is outrageous. <laughs> a prank. We saw the prank meter again. Nanakin. I like this uh, version of Harlequin. Rose, Pester John. Show Pester Lock. Oh, there you are. John said your house was burning down. Are you on fire yet or what? No, for now I have a trier to the safety of a smaller building which is much closer to the forest fire threatening my residence. Oh well, that's a relief. John told me to get the game to help you out of there, so I'm working on that now. Working on it? Yeah, my rose copy long story. Hey, don't tell John the spider think he might have been right about the puppets. They are sort of starting to freak me out a little. You are referring to your brother's collection? 
I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's cool and all. The semi-ironic puppet thing or whatever, or semi-semi-ironic, man, I don't even know. I'm just starting to think some of the shit is going a little far and it's kind of fucked up. I've seen his websites. I like them. Haha, <laughs> well, yeah, well, you what? Oh man, I wish little Cal wouldn't look at me like that. With those dead eyes, Jesus, sometimes I dream that he's real and he's talking to me and I wake up on a cold sweat and basically flip the fuck out. Interesting. Oh god, why did I just tell you my dream? You're going to have a field day with that. I'm currently scrolling notes furiously into one of the many spiker analysis journals I maintain for you published papers forthcoming. Because, you know, it isn't like either of us have anything better to do at the moment than to evaluate each other's vertically debilitating pathologies. Yeah, I'm gonna get moving. Oh, have you heard from John? He's not answering me. He won't answer me either, but I'm watching him. I suspect he's preoccupied with the fact that he just had a bucket of water dumped on his head by the ghost of his dead grandmother, who also happens to be dressed like a clown. Ha 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 ha, alright, I'm out. Later. Interrogate this mad woman. Show sprite lock. Um, Nana? Yes, dear? Wow, you scared the living daylights out of me. Ho ho ho! Well, I guess that was a really great prank. Good one, Nana. Anyway, are you really my dead Nana? Of course, John. I have come back to help you on your journeys through the medium and beyond. I am delighted to see what a fine young man you have turned out to be, just like your father. Okay, I guess I will take your word for it. I don't remember you at all. My dad said I was really young when you died. Hey, speaking of which, do you know where he is? I looked everywhere for him. There he is. John's dead. Your father was kidnapped. Oh no, when you crossed over to the medium, he was apprehended by the very forces of darkness which your presence here has awakened. What? Okay, then what is the medium you are talking about? It is where we are now, a realm that is a wing of pure void dividing light and darkness and turns into thick of the incipitia, a place untouched by the flow of time in your universe. You mean because we are inside a computer or in the game software or something? A computer? Why? What is that, dear? Some newfangled contraption like the horseless auto box car? Well, uh, it's like this machine that ooh, ho ho ho, of course I know what the computer is, John, I was just pulling your leg, ho ho ho. Oh, okay. No, John, you are not inside the computer or software or anything like that. Try not to be so linear, dear. The software that brought you here was merely a mechanism that served as a gateway. Its routines in a way serve to invoke this worm's instant, yet it stands independently on of any physical machine and somewhat paradoxically always has. I am not sure I get it, but alright. So, what do I actually need to be doing here? I think it would be best if we started with a big picture. Go on. Okay, let's let's watch first and then read. Above the medium, beyond the seven gates, residing at the core of the incipit sphere is a place known as Skaya. Legend holds that Skaya exists as a dormant fuckable of unlimited creative potential. What does this mean, you ask? I'm afraid my lips are sealed about the dear ho ho. But needless to say, we are a realm of such profound importance as concerned, forces of life will forever be charged with its defense. Our forces of darkness will just as presently covet its destruction. As it so happens, at the center of this realm, whose fate is in question, these very forces duel on a stage, stuck in eternal stalemate. Yes, they have dueled in this manner forever, that is, until you showed up. As you can see, there is a chessboard, and this chessboard is really small, so that the kings will forever be in stalemate, because they can't come out of here. <laughs> Me? Me? Yes, you, John. Before you mishap with my ashes, you may recall the sprite's previous incarnation which resulted from its kernel's hatching. You see, this hatching occurs automatically in response to your arrival. The result is a pair of kernels, one dark, one light, each carrying the information they were prototyped with before the hatch. One goes down to a kingdom entrenched in darkness. The other up to a kingdom basking in light. Each comes to rest in an orb atop a spire, of which there are three others in kind. The four spires are situated above a throne, and these two stones preside over the two respective sovereign powers. Nah. 
And once the kernels are situated, that is when the game is a fruit. The true war begins. Light versus dark, good versus evil. This is a war that the forces of light are always destined to lose without expectation. So as you can see, this is just a game of chess. But it's a really complicated game of chess. As you can see, they all turned into harlequins because of the kernel sprite. Because they are taking... Um, like in suburb, the enemies are taking the traits of whatever was prototyped. A quest of fertility then. Well, really, then what's the point? That remains for you to find out, dear, for you see, the journey you are about to take is the ultimate riddle. Wow. For now, your, your objective is to proceed towards Skaya and press through the first gate situated directly above your house. Not even terrible far. The gates will become for will be more difficult to read, so you had better be prepared to sharpen your adventuring skills. How am I supposed to get up there? You built. Uh, we can click on this. Okay, I think I get it now, so I guess the battle against good and evil is sort of irrelevant. Well, I don't know. That all signs kind of weird, but in any case, we build the house to get to these gates and then I can save my dad. Yes, John. And then after that, we solve this ultimate riddle thing and save Earth from destruction. Oh no, I'm afraid not. What? <laughs> With question marks. Your planet is done for, dear. There's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> He's so bummed out. Oh. Your purpose is so much more important than saving the silly old planet, so. And that is ho 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 ho. Yes, I will have to agree with the float hack about that. John, you are such a good boy, I know you will succeed. Thanks, Nana. You are a good boy, and good boy deserves treats. Away! I'm going to bake you some cookies. <laughs> the hack mentioned cookies. Pursue her. Oh god damn it, that's just what you need. More baked goods. John, you do not say no to cookies, I command you to get some. You totally abjure the hell out of that idea. You are so busy abjuring, you don't even notice Rose has been trying to pester you this whole time. Rose hit John in the head with a box to get his attention. You give John a swift rubbing in the noggin, but he is undeterred. That is some fit he is drawing. Perhaps you will take the spare moment to contemplate the Nana's quite strange tale. It might also behoove you to record your thoughts of these developments in your game Fag Walks through Journal. It can be hard finding time to update it. In fact, you are not even sure where you found the time to write what's already there. Oh, is it so, Jaspers? And just who do you think you are looking at with that smug win? The last thing you need is death from a dead cat. It's pretty much all his fault you are in this mess in the first place, so he can he just but so he can just button it. John, cookies, now You refuse outright. This impudence is insufferable. Go get the cookies Well when you put it so politely, how can John decline? John, you are stupid You really need to work on your manner. Stupid, stupid dump <laughs> That's not a comment. It's nothing. It's stupid. You are stupid. For the last time, I command you to get the cookies, boy. It's just not going to happen, buddy. Years in the future. <laughs> but really not enough to write home about. An agitated finger slips me keystroke. Something came out. Beans! Mustard! Human etiquette. So what what of these does he need the most? <laughs> oh god, we have another walk through time. <laughs> okay, I, I like I like the names here. Sanctuary Remix, Winnie the Poop 2 and Chaos Demon. The long and short, the medium too. I may have been a bit hasty in advising you not to bother with the prototyping process. If I spared any detail, it was only to optimize your chances of survival. And if you find yourself begrudging the absence of certain instructions which you followed would have resulted in your demise, and I guess that makes two of us. Otherwise, you're welcome. But the fact appears to be that prototyping the kernel sprite before making your getaway may offer the only opportunity to exercise control over your new environment. A place known as a medium. Also, a prototype with one or two sufficiently, albeit loosely, human or sentient elements, living or other right, it offers a chance to have all this explained to you by an apparitional guide to whatever sort of cryptic, sketchy, double speak your choice of prototyping elements in gender. 
In view of this, you may be forced to settle for my clear, so worth explanations and assiduous dissection of raw data. Again, don't mention it. If you have made it to the medium with an unmolested vanilla sprite, well, I've already covered the bad news about this missed opportunity and I will go into this further soon. So to what extent this actually is bad news, I'm not sure. I know only the result of my co-player's current configuration, we are in the sprite with prototype once before the departure and once after. Which brings us to the good news which is that you can still prototype after your departure. And so watch the massively rewarding experience of hackling with an exposition slinging phantom guide so long as you avoid prototyping with terribly inert items, such as a rust door knocker and your father's pornography collection. Actually, that might be interesting. If you are struck by the spirit of such experimentation, please don't hesitate to contact me about it. So yes, you can enhance your sprite in this way, but doing so after your departure will no longer induce the effect on the medium I alluded to. That can only be accomplished with one or more pre-departure prototypings. In fact, you can extrapolate there are only so many ways to prototype a sprite. Tiers of prototyping in relation to departure, both before, one before, one after, both after, only one, either before or after, none. Those occurring before will affect the mediums through the kernel's hatching process and your guide i.e. the sprite. Those occurring after will only affect the sprite. The effects this process has on the medium or more globally, the incipi sphere, are still vague to me. They have to do with flavoring the forces you will struggle against in generally, all forces at odds with each other in this realm. It has given me some insight into the nature of the game, which again I derive to extrapolation. We appear to be engaged in an instance of a dimension with a highly flexible set parameters and a series of objectives surrounding an, equi an equally flexible mythological framework. This framework seems to begin with a sort of blank template and evolves with the player's action and likely further evolves with the addition of more host-client connections and thus more prototyped kernels. I regret to say I can be much more specific than that without loosely extrapolating further. There are plenty of questions that have occurred to me, however. Questions concerning the kernel sprite, which I've raised implicitly already, such as what is the effect of an unprototyped kernel on the medium, or a double prototyped kernel for that matter, and even more salient are questions about this dimension itself. Do all players worldwide make it to this dimension if they successfully complete the departure, or is a unique blank instance of the dimension created for each new player? I have no evidence, but instinct tells me it is closer to the latter situation. There is no indication of any other players present in this realm. Alteration in the realm seems singularly centered on the actions of my co-player and myself. If I had to stake anything on it, I would guess every separate client server pair activates its own fresh copy of an Inswitzer, or unique session if you will. But the quantity of players is a further complication which invites more questions. It seems the game was designed to suit two players most naturally, the server and the client. But through a mashup, my co-player and I have slipped out of the obvious tandem arrangement and the only logical course of action to continue playing is to string a daisy chain of server-client connections together, until presumably the chain is complete. Theoretically, I could complete this chain with only one other player, functioning as a server to my client, and the client to my current co-player's server, assuming he can recover it. The strange thing is though, in our instance of this dimension, there are four with sets with four divided kernels, not three. Does this mean we are just trying to have a four-player chain? How could the game know such a thing? Perhaps it does, and if this proves to be the case, I trust I will be sufficiently numb to the realization. I can consider nothing about this game surprising at this point, and in fact, from the first moments of play, I've managed to deviate so far from my expectations that I completely forgot what my original purpose was it was. I had chances to test some information I obtained on good authority during the prototyping phases, but it completely slipped my mind instead. The game's catacombs securing the dark twisting past the necromancy were blundered into weather on accident. Perhaps you don't need to know any of this. Reasoning organization? Leap my waist. Leap door. The local sludge trim down. Bleh. Bleh. She's not finished with it yet. Please cut her some slack. Maybe you could go back someone somewhere else for a while. But it's a very last. At least someone else. Months in the past, but not many. Oh, it's so much snow. <laughs> Hey, happy birthday, Rose. Hello and thanks. Did you get Chop's present yet? I just opened it this very moment. What a stunning coincidence you would ask about it. Now I'm stunned. Yeah, I know. What will you make with it? And who said it was something from which something else could be made? Well, John did tell me what it was, duh. I suppose I'll take a step learning the craft. That's the least I can do in response to the supple dick concealed in his gesture. 
He often tells me I need a new hobby when I make perfectly reasonable analytical remarks. Oh, but both, I don't think he meant anything like that by it. You see, not everybody always means the opposite of what they say the way you and Dave always do. Maybe. His birthday is in a few months, isn't it? Yep, I finally finished a present for him. I've been working on it for years. Yes, it's so hard to tell when you're joking. Or if you're even capable of it. <laughs> I just mailed it too, so it's true to get there on time. Mail takes a while to get anywhere from here. I'll probably craft something with strong sentimental value that should burn him. I don't think you really mean that. I guess not. So, shall I expect the green patcher drop to my house via airmail from whatever screwball cranny of the globe you're tucked into? Uh, no. Sorry, but you are sort, sort of hard shop for. Besides, I have something for you today that I think you will like better than some single box. Oh, it is a tip. This is already intriguing enough to compensate for the grave scarcity of lavish gifts parachuting from the sky. Please go on. Yet you have a pet a long time ago that died? Yes. Okay, well, how did you feel about your cat? Did you love him a lot? Okay, well, I didn't mention it was a cat or that it was a male. Let's pretend I'm surprised and you were embarrassed and move on. To answer your question, I would describe my feelings towards the animal as Luba. Um, okay, that's fine. It doesn't really matter, I think, just... What if someone told you you could play a game that would bring him back to life? If someone told me that, I would regard the remark with a great deal of skepticism. If that someone was you, on the other hand, then I would have to ask preemptively. Is that someone you? Yes, that someone is me! I just thought you might find it interesting. So what is this game? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying it's all. I think you'll hear about it later, and maybe you can talk to John and Dave about it. <coughs> they are way more into all that stuff than I am. I'll see what the word on the street is about it, in due time. For now, I should probably order a copy of Knitting for Assholes. It would be a shame if I ran late with John's present. Dave, get Katana. <coughs> you capture your Katana. 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 9 divided to 10 is 9 and prepare to venture out into the apartment to retrieve your bro's copy of the game. But first, maybe, just maybe, Dave, retrieve that bird. Dude, that bird is long done. It probably won't last long in this heat anyway. You don't even know what's up with this sick heat. The sun threatens to set but won't step off. It's definitely down, like the big red eye of a hot nibble skidding on a groove it's tracing around the earth. While in your winning midair, its heat seems to suspend time itself, fretting it like warp vinyl. It's meant to rain the season, but there ain't been a drop in sight. Even a little drizzle would help. Might help the fizzle to sizzle a little bizzle, that the record straight of this global turn tizzle. So don't change the dizzle, turn a double little. Got a living room full of fine time whistles, waiting on the pizzle, the dizzle and the shizzle. Cheese to the physics, now lady here we chizzle. And the pimps and the quip mart were put like a thought, were put like a thought, were put like a thought. English romantic poet, John Keats. Dave, exit your room and go into the living room. Sorry, little dude, coming through, gotta put you down for a bit. You figure you've left him hanging long enough. Dave, hastily enter the room with wild abandon. Yes, thank you, I think I'm getting better at this. You barge in and see a familiar face, a friendly face. You stand in the living room. Your bro spends most of his days in here. At night he crashes on the futon over there. You don't see him anywhere though. There's a puppet chest he stores little Cal in when he takes him out on gigs, but when he's home he usually leaves Cal in this place somewhere, and with good reason cause Cal is totally sweet. So sweet, man. Dave, pity the fool. It's your brother's Mr. T puppet, which of course is kept in the apartment with a sense of profound humor with irony, but as usual with your bro's exploit. This is no ordinary irony or anything close to a pedestrian tier one ironic gesture which is a meager single step removed from sincerity. This is like 10 levels of irony removed from the original joke. It might have been funny like 8 years ago to joke about Mr. T and how he was sort of lame. But that was the very thing that made him awesome and badass. And that his awesomeness was also sort of the joke. But in this case, the joke is a joke and that degree of irony itself is also the joke and so on. Only highly, highly adept satirical ninjas like you and your bro can appreciate stuff like this. It's cool taking stuff that other people think is funny. But you know really isn't, and making it funny again by adding subtle strata of irony which are utterly undetectable to the untrained eye. Also for good measure, Mr. T is wearing a leather song and handcuffed to a pantsless Jack Norris puppet. Puppet. God, you hope you can be as good as your bro at this someday, you'd never tell him that so. Dave, find little Cal and give fist bumps. 
Hell, it's nowhere in sight. All you see is a bunch of their both weird new puppets doing a one tap passati. You, you guess these things are kinda cool. Sort of. Dave, play a game on the Xbox. It looks like your bro was playing. It's not like him to leave in the middle of some totally intense gaming. Not like him to misplace Cal either. Man, you hope the little guy's alright. Clara, what is this? Clara is coming in at me, yelling at me. Oh, there you are, dude. Didn't see you, sir. We were chill today, Cal. Yeah, you better fucking believe we be chill. Cal is a man. Okay, so. Please remember this puppet. Remember the little Cal. Remember him. Yo, yes. Dave, resist great urge to play bros Xbox. You failed to resist the urge. You start thrashing up stunts, Clara. <laughs> Something uncanny brutal on your quest for Mads next year and gets this way root hunger under control. Shit is basically flying off the hook. It's like shit wants nothing to do with the hook. The hook is dead to that shit. But you get stuck in some poorly models to defect or something, like a railing or a piece of the wall. You'll have to wizard. Fuck this shit. <laughs> the puppet's coming back and I can't say anything more about the puppet other than you have to remember him. Dave, give little Cal a bro fist bump. Oh man, you almost forgot. Get a give the seaman some forbs. Hello. Ah, you were in the no white. Dave, check out your bro's sweet gear. Your bro has so much sweet gear, it's hard to keep up with it all sometimes. Here's his computer setup. He's usually got a lot of stuff cooking on here at any given moment. Since he's not around, you might as well sneak a peep. Dave, look at your brother's computer. Clara, jetzt lauf doch mal nicht vor meinem Bildschirm rum. Okay, I have the cat in the arm. Your bro's computer is password protected, of course, to protect all the incredible top secret shit he's got on the burners. Of course, you know what the password is and he knows you know it and you're both cool with that because the password is the most awesome thing it can be. You enter the password. On the desktop is a hodgepodge of unnamed folders to store all the stuff he's working on. No one can decipher his organization system but him. He also tends to use the application complete bullshit to keep up with the ludicrous amount of websites and newsfeed he monitors to stay hip to the scene. Dave, open complete bullshit. Oh god, oh god. This is complete bullshit. Dave, check if Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff has a sweet update. Your bro keeps up with your projects and his aggregator, just like you keep up with his. He's tuned into your various blogs and of course Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. You navigate to the latest comics in one of the many bullshit feed bands. Bro, I got a ticket for the big game in sports. Dog, I'm so jealous. You know, I love the big game. Oh yeah, and here he goes. The big man has the rock, driving so hard through the paint downtown. And he hoped for the slam dunk. Yeah, these comics are just so bad. <laughs> Dave, mouse over the orange strip containing plush rump. Plush rump. <laughs> God, this is so, this is almost 90s. Another one of your both many ironic websites. The difference here is he rakes in thousands of dollars a month through his enterprise. Snapwits are a multi billion dollar a year enterprise, and it's you folly hard to resist taking a firm squeeze from the plump udder of that cash cow. Dave, stop wasting time and look for bros beta. The ancestor of the pog face, yes. You guess you've messed around on his computer long enough, but I get to move on before it's too late for Rose, or worse yet, your bro catches you. But my god, the worms, they are transfixing. You know this is ironic and all, and your bro reaches echelons of irony you could only dream of daring to fathom, but on rare occasions, when your guard is down, it all seems just a tad unsettling to you. Anything else happening in the, in the gif? Doesn't seem like it. Oh, oh hey, hey Sir Kel. Dave, Dave, give little Kel a nervous fist bump. You are sort of starting to flip the fuck out without losing your cool, of course. Dave, pester John to ease your nerves. You get expert on the line. Again, to give him the lowdown on your progress, you feel it's important to keep the wires hot, but he's not answering. You wonder what that guy is up to. 
Hey, what is up? What happened with the monster that is totally definitely in your womb? Did you kill it? Where are you, man? Anyway, things are cool here. Totally cool. Puppets are still awesome. No problem for them or anything, like, just really, really awesome. Bro has one hell of a puppet kink. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Looks like Rose is finally locked in again. Didn't John say her house was burning down? You wonder if he's on fire yet or what? Dave, Pester Rose. Oh, there you are. John said your house is burning down. Are you on fire yet or what? Uh, this, is, uh, this is what we have read already, so I will skip about over this. Seconds in the future, but not many. John, what are you doing? Step out of it. We ought to discuss what your grandmother told you, don't you think? Fine, enjoy your stupor. I'll go about my business elsewhere. Rose, deploy the punch to the Nix. John, whenever you read this, you should know I put the shale you collected to use and finally employed the punch desert mix. It isn't your study. I can only drop it, so you'll have to be the one to mess around with it and see what it does. When you are finished with your weird histrionics, maybe you could give it a try. I'm updating my walk soon, it would help to know what it does. More imps. Hey, one of them is using the disguise. <laughs> Also, I should probably warn you that your house and yard are completely infested with monsters now. Try to be careful. So I can see, stupid lousy imps. They are mocking up all my cool stuff. Oh, there you are. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm not sure what came over me there. I was acting really crazy for some reason. But my head feels like it's clearing up. I think I'm alright now. John, we built the claw hammer and we turn it to Specibus. You're getting way better at this sort of thing. John, confront Pogo White right? to prepare yourself for Nana. <laughs> Thank God your sanity has returned so you can entertain extremely rational, coherent thoughts like this one. You examine the Pogo White right? from the bathroom window. You do not like what you see. Giddy up. Those sons of bitches, no one with painful injury on your green slime goes Pogo White. Right? No one but you. Okay, how do we play? Click Giddy up. Use arrow keys to operate Pogo White. Right? Go for insane combos. Okay. Uh, nothing is happening. Ah, no. I don't get any points. I'm trying to go and attack. This doesn't really work. No, I don't even know how to get a high score. Rose, drop something heavy on one of those imps. Tear the piano. <laughs> hey, look, we got whist. Rose, my piano! Sorry, no nuance to these controls at all. I was hoping to plug turn the imp without letting go of it. Guess I can't really do that. A broken piano isn't the end of the world, so. I guess you are right. You'll need to pick up the spoils in person. I can't interact with the quiz, so that means I have to go out the back door. Yes, is there a problem? Well, it may sound dumb, but I was hoping to avoid Nana and her spooky ghost cookies. You are right. That does sound dumb. Can you see her in the kitchen? Yeah. What she's doing? Is she baking? You could say that. Are you sure you can get that quiz up to me somehow? Maybe. Rose, use Pogo White to fling quiz through window. Doesn't look like the quiz is going anywhere. You just never know with these gaming extractions. Ah, uh, Clara, werf nicht meine Flasche runter. Oh, es tut Pogo White in John's Bathroom. John, get Quist. So, apparently my chat wasn't connected right now. Okay, it's connected again. There you go. Now, why don't you check out the Desert Nix? You can't do that while I get to work. On what? Piano. Level up for slaying the imp. The piano in its valiant effort has unfortunately been slain. But if it hadn't, it would have waked in so many boon dollars you have no idea. So many. Rose, it's time to build. Stairs. <laughs> Nana said to build, so that's what I'm doing. Oh yeah, okay. But the shoe is going to take a lot of quist. Looks like you're going to be busy, John. Lark. Well, what are you building? Stairs. They are fairly expensive, actually. Oh man, I could have warned you about stairs, Rose. 
So you're thinking about sweet bone and hello, Jeff. I try re recouping some of the grist from the catwalk I built earlier. It keeps happening. Ah, good. Looks like I can get a refund for earlier allocations. I told you, Rose. I told you about stairs. Okay, consider me fully briefed on the matter of stairs. Now, if you don't mind, it's hard enough to concentrate on this without immersing ourselves in Strider's non sequitur. Did you know he thinks puppets are cool? Does he? He's so dumb. Rose, use Bill Chris to construct observation tower on roof. Nice. Okay, you obviously don't have enough twist yet for something that ambitious, but you can get started with something of a foundation for upwards construction at least. John, check cabinets for imps or useful items. No imps in here, just a lot of shaving cream. That's love shaving, it's basically all they do. And they are not baking, that is. John, drink two cans of shaving cream. Let's get out. You kept your lock two cans of shaving cream just in case. You never know when you'll need to bust out the hilarious shaving cream center here to ratchet up your prankster's gambit. Your telescope goes flying out the window. John, write pogo white. It's a little cramped in here for any sort of proper vector's pogoing. You'll just wrap it and hang onto it until the right moment presents itself. The tower floats back down to the wreck. The circle of stupidity is complete. Rose, check up on Nanakin, see what's cooking. There are a lot of cookies. John, make your way to the study. <laughs> this was funny. There are more imps. It looks like the imps have taken a shining to the crooks to the crooks eat in black goo everywhere. It's too many cookies even for us, yeah. John, white slime a pogo and one ups the imp. Well, okay, it's not a slime a pogo, but you mount it anyway and brandish your deadly ornaments. John, why do you steed to victory? This worked pretty well. This is incredibly dangerous. John, flip the fuck out. Let's see how they like the old double bevel laser blaster. Whoops, oh shit. I, I love seeing you have fun. Mr. John respectfully asks that you please stand up. Ouch. <laughs> Don't move or the pogo gets it. Now, sir boy, flee from his boorish rebel post taste. I'm pretty sure he read the book. Nice abscond, dude. Refrigerator, level up for slaying the imp. Oh, I should have read that after the gift. <laughs> there are cookies on the refrigerator. No, they are not on them on it anymore. The World Trader Skywalk is up the accolader to a new one. Five Star General Electric that earns 285 boon dollars. Things are really looking up for this feisty appliance. Well done, John. Polite congratulations. For some reason, you feel a sense of positive reinforcement. Wherever that feeling is coming from, it shows a welcome change from your erratic moods earlier. Now, my civil fellow, I have a well-mannered query to ask. I blocked the entrance to the study to give you some space to work with the designix. John, Im's behind you. Should I take care of it? You trapped your PDA again, didn't you? Why did you have to pick up all the stupid shaving cream? So pointless. Well, drop something heavy on one of those imps. I signed safe. But why from so far? John, might I bother you for a can opener? Oblivious to the commotion behind you, suddenly you find yourself pondering the whereabouts of a can opener. You think there's probably one in the kitchen, but the path is blocked by your refrigerator. John is completely unresponsive. What the hell is that Nincom poop doing years in the future? But that's not got Tate totally carried away here. Study his eyes dart about a page like a honeybee gathering the nectar of wisdom. Please, thank you, you're welcome. Good day, how do you do? Splendid and new gratification. <laughs> he just looked out the page and ate it. Yes, he ate the pages. 
Oh god. I can't take as many as I'd like to for composer documentation for what it's worth. Years of managed to collect so far. More captures forthcoming. Okay, let's look at some. Co-player John assesses environment after transition to medium, followed by sprite, sense kernel, prototype one prehatch. Completely useless in this form. The, the word from subvertent and grid house remains mysteriously powered. Convenience presumably facilitated by game, which prior teams navigating a powerless house to be a handicap less in keeping with spirit of game's principal statement of challenge. Quick ways to absorb the knowledge, clearly. Yep. Internet connection remains stable as well, will likely remain stable until the internet itself is compromised by some external threat. Something like, oh, let's say hackers. Kill monsters, get grist, build onto the house. That's the game. Didn't know what the point of this was at the time. Flowering trial and error on exhibit. Unsuccessful attempt at tier 2 prototyping. Knowing what I know now, I might have avoided using a backbreaking weight and vacuum for practical jokers as wife with antiquated lexicon and bassist aphorisms. Either that, or I might have tried harder to succeed. Disconnect. Final screen capture before I lost my internet signal for a time. I don't know what happened thereafter, but when I returned, the car was nowhere to be found, and the driveway plateau was in a state of disrepair. The mysteries. Will they ever cease? Sprite prototype once more with grandmother's remains. She treats John to some helpful exposition in a friendly maternal, grand maternal manner. Co-player has displayed inexplicably kept with his behavior since the wife was dressed, contracted wives and in indigenous to realm, it should be noted he was kind of a word guy anyway. This is next deployed. Still no clue what this does. At mercy of co-player's foolish prioritization tendencies. Play load from slain foe. Whether I deal the damage or co-player does, yield the same. So I have a significant advantage in battle. Taking measures into my own hands deprives John of hand-to-hand -hand combat experience, which ostensibly will become more critical later. Building the point. Building upward. The point sharpened and directed. Ah, steeds, steeds, what steeds? Has a whirlwind a home in your mains? Is there a sensitive ear alert as a flame in your every fiber? Giving the familiar song from above, all in one accord you strain your bronze chest, and hooves barely touching the ground turn into straight lines cleaving the air, and all inspired by God it rushes on. Yeah, I, I have no idea what the fuck he's doing there. <laughs> Another one of these things, really, Egbert family? Really? Yeah, I was wondering this earlier, actually. A view of his kidnapped father's room. I can't see in here for some reason. Perhaps this is because John himself has never entered the room. It is possible that I can see only, in a sense, what John can see or has seen already. I have not found the time to discuss this with him yet. If he enters the room, the question may answer itself. Both construct loft above John's room. At least we have the pillars already. How shall we come up there? Are we building stairs? Letters seem to be a bit cheaper than stairs. Oh, of course. Fellow John, it appears we have reached an impasse. Yes, it seems so. The opener dilemma remains unsettled, most unfortunately. It is unfortunate, I guess. What are we talking about again? But it has been a pleasure nonetheless. Thanks for the courtesy. It's not really necessary, but thanks anyway. Yeah, Homestuck at the beginning feels like a game of Sims that, that is kind of reality bending. Oh, but thank you. Okay, thank you so very, very much, dear favorable small primate. I shall take my leave now, John. Until next time. <laughs> Rose is having a mental breakdown. Wait, where did all the sweet loot come from? And why is there suddenly a crumpled hat on your head? John, as I quiz, examine Designix. Feeling especially economical with your behavior suddenly, you scoop up all the quests in the room and turn your attention to the punch designs all in one fell swoop. The device features a countertop station design with a keyboard setup, not unlike an old-fashioned computer, with a blinking red light and a diagram etched into a panel. Both and the date. Okay, wait, hold on, why am I getting the stupid game for you? You are the one who should be with deep in puppet ass. Wait. Is a f what is the specific problem? The problem is I am up to my goddamn neck and fucking puppet dong!
You know you like the mannequin dick, accept it. I'm enveloped in chafing, wiggling good fucking damn puppet pelvis. An obscenely long course, Kermit cock is being dragged across my engaged face. Let's put this into perspective. You put up with the puppet prostate because you love it. Also, of course, is a good word. You don't seem to harbor any sympathy for the fact that I've buried fuck deep into a lively fluffy muppet buttock. <laughs> I'm whirling in the terrible cyclone at the epicenter of my own personal hollow curve of twitching foam noses. It's like a fucking apocalypse of perky poses here, like the Pobos calypse, I guess. Are you going to start rapping about this? What? No, no, listen. From your flesh, we have to foam. Consolas tricks a cleft of foam. Oh, no, what use? Of apocalypse, you sought the clips. A painted pair of parted lips. The dares to kiss to stir the air. The teases tufts of orange hair. And saw face flush and lovers fit. Hands snuck and plush as gloves befit. Okay, Dickinson, if you can shut your perfumey trap for a half second, this is serious, I'm just saying. If I see one more soft bulbous bottom being like kind of dotting out it, impudent or whatever, I'm gonna fly off the handle. I'm going to some sort of acrobat and fucking pay word off the handle and win like a medal or some shit. And let's hope there will be a squishy area somewhere below the handle to break your fall. Dave is having a moment. <laughs> you will see later what happened to him. John, observe back of the first visible capture low card. You flip over the top card containing your poker white. Any time you capture look something, a new code appears on the back of the card. You have always wondered what the code was for. Damn, these things are hard to read, but then you've never really found any reason to decipher them. Until now, perhaps? John, examine the surf side of hammer card and strife specimens. Looks like cards from your strife deck have codes too. John, enter capture code as seen on back of poker white card. You enter the D Q M M J L E K into the keyboard. At least you think that's what the code is. The red light switches off. A green light begins blinking. John, insert card. John, type in N Z seven U N six D I. In the interest of due diligence, you enter the other code and repeat the process for set card two. Both cards are now punched with different hole patterns. John, attempt to retrieve Pogo from card. Oh well, that should just be a simple matter of, uh oh, it looks like it's trapped now. You don't see how you can assess the item anymore or store a new item there for that matter. These cards are pretty much useless now and the items that contain are toast. But maybe all is not lost. Recalling from your experience with a pre-punched card, you may be able to use the card to replicate the items in question. Assuming you got the codes right, that is. John, mesh keys heedlessly. Not quite through with your cowboy empiricism just yet, you measure the keyword to generate a random code. You enter DSKJHSDK. The desert list stops you after 8 characters, which appears to be the maximum length for a code. The green light goes on, signaling its readiness for a card. You figure you might as well burn the shaving cream, since the product is not exactly at a premium in your household. You also figure you might as well merge the two cans onto one card. You are a little sad that your dad isn't around for this. You have a feeling he would get a real kick out of the idea of duplicating more shaving cream. You punch the card with a pattern that is in no way related to the code for the item it contains. This should make for an interesting experiment. Mad science is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, you just burned another card in the process. Your deck is really dwindling now. Maybe you should have thought this through a little better. On the plus side, you just freed up your PTA, which is overflowing with pent up chatter of Angel's pesteras. One of the imps. There's a shadow. Ouch. <laughs> this was a bathtub. John, answered your chumps. Puppets, awesome, that's really all there is to say in the matter. Don't take God had changed his mood to Rancorous. John, I'm about to throw a best tubs through your wall. Watch out. <laughs> she warned him. Wow, that was so totally unnecessary. I made a shortcut upstairs. I thought it would be a good idea to get up there and try the cards as soon as possible. Also, you weren't being terribly responsive. You mean these stairs? Man, look at these shitty stairs. They are so narrow. I'm supposed to climb those? They are perfectly navigable. I'm saving on grist for now. If you keep slaying foes, collecting grist and expanding the cage limit, we may not need to be so economical with our resources in the future. John's poor house. Yeah, the house is completely trashed already. 
So why didn't you just build a way up through that hole into my dad's room? Have you ever been in there? No, exactly, huh? I'd rather not get sidetracked. I'm more interested in further exploring the mechanics of the game than watching you discover what sort of outlandish harlequin Darker your father keeps in his room. Oh, come on, what's the big deal? I just climb up and go right through. Will you? Yeah, why not? Are you saying you've never wondered what's in there or why it's been kept a secret from you? Well, I mean, yeah. Then trust me, you won't be going right on through. Wait, are you saying there's something like troubling in there? I don't know. What do you mean? What do you see in there? I can see in there. Oh, but I don't have a very good feeling about it. Whatever, I think I can handle a few more stupid clown paintings. Rose, move punched cards to John's room. Ah, oh, let me drink something. Why does it have to be so hot today? Rose, drag some crooks and dowels up to John's room. John, collect wrist, examine safe. You swoop up the bountiful supply of wrist generated by your co-player's recent exploits. From now on, you will probably go without saying that you'll have any wrist lying around without making a big fuss over it. You check out the busted safe which has made a noble sacrifice in battle. Some of your father's odds and ends have spilled out, including some old new newspaper clippings and two weather hefty tones. It's a fair bet that these books comprise at least half the weight of the safe. John, examine family tome of humor. It's another copy of Colonel Sussaker's daunting text of magical frivolity and practical japery. This one looks really old, perhaps an original printing. Could it be the same one involved with your grandmother's unfortunate accident on that fateful day? Dad would never speak a word about it, but maybe Nana wouldn't be so tight-lipped. You give it a cursory perusal. It appears to be similar to your reprinting. Listen to me. Listing all the shapes and chicanery you have come to know and laugh. You capture Logan, thinking you may give it a closer look later. <clears throat> John, examine contents of safe. The father's gent, shaving almanac. You take a look at the other books. You are sure Dad thought this was a scintillating read, but it looks pretty boring to you. Maybe you'll crack into it someday when you are old enough to shave. Everything in the safe is obvi obviously very important to your father. You wonder why he kept it locked away from you? Some things about him you will never understand. It seems he has been collecting scraps from the news over the years. These articles go back decades. Meteor, Spacewalk knocks local verbs block off. John, look at the piece of paper taped to the wall. Son, if you are reading this, it means you are not strong enough to lift the safe. You are now a man. As such, you are entitled to what is inside. I know you will take this responsibility seriously. I am so proud of you. John, turn the card over. 024930. You guess this is a combination to the safe. This is completely useless. John, examine back of capture low card on floor. This are, these are a lot of zeros. You guess these are all zeros, so are they all capital uh, O's? Zeros would probably make more sense for an empty card, you think? John, capture low the card. John, enter code on back of card into designex. John, punch card. Wait, John, before you punch that, oh, I was about to say, if you first took note of the codes and removed the card from the card, you could have punched the blank one. You would have only burned one card instead of two. Oh yeah, you're right. Damn it! John, stole head down in disgust. <laughs> this was pretty far. John, capture note, punch, capture note, capture note card. Sweet catch. What? John, take PDA. The two card Zillidex, inventory of dumbasses. Ah, same was lame. John, level up. Colonel Sussaker, level up for slaying the imp. The colonel saws to new hates on his ladder, reaching the rung. One man to loop back home and pockets 9,550 boon dollars. Jump change for the genteel aristocrat thousand colonel. First up, level up for slaying the imp. The best tip search heroically and surprises the Wang Archimedes Equitable proceeding directly to wanted Wang Tef Gemma. The tap makes off with a cool 490 boon dollars. The tap's best and capacity remains unaffected. Safe. Level up for slaying the imp. The safe was slain in battle. A great flame nautical pyre carries it off to wall cellar. John, make your way up those stairs. Post haste. Okay, and I won't stop here because it's getting late. I am reading for two hours and I am getting exhausted. Well then, let's save our place, uh, even though we kind of don't need to, but I will still save my place. 
So, thank you all so much for watching. Have a good day or a good night. And I hope I see you again next Sunday where we'll play Mother 3 again.